Hello, how you doing? This is LaQueen Battle. Today is Thursday, September the 9th, 2021, and I am reporting here from Harvard University in regards to the Department of Justice as um, uh, general, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and review it here, General um, Anthony, um, excuse me, let this video here. Hello guys, this is LaQueen, how are you doing today? Pretty much I'm just giving you guys an overview that the Department of Justice is actually in, in Washington, D.C. is actually in the midst of protecting women's rights for the state of Texas. So I think that that is a wonderful idea. It was unfortunately um, a little bit too late to the cause of a lot of women as well as myself who have gone through extreme amount of pain as well as physical abuse and domestic violence situations dealing with the cause of abortion and how abortion has impacted women around the United States. So I think it is a wonderful, a wonderful, great start. This is a start that's saying that the Department of Justice is going to be suing in the midst of, in the process of suing the state of Texas as well as its governor, Greg Abbott, against any kind of fundamental laws that proceeding with denying women the opportunity to vote as well as those other officials, medical professionals, who support women in the effort towards getting access to abortion care. So this also is also dictated in this uh, bill, um, Texas bill, that any kind of provider, it could be any kind of medical provider, not necessarily a doctor, but it can also be a nurse, it, it can also be a CNA, a medical assistant, as well as any other, um, any kind of person, as well as drivers, um, drivers too, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, who also support women in getting access to abortion care. So I think that um, that is extremely harsh to fine women $10,000, as well as those that support them, to fine these people $10,000 in their efforts towards um, towards assisting women in getting quality access to health care. Now, this is not only about abortion. The issue is not only about abortion. The issue is also about sexual reproductive health care. It's actually talking about getting access and getting treatment to STDs. STD treatment, HIV care, getting access to HIV testing, which Planned Parenthood is really well known for is its ability to treat people in HIV and STD treatment. Um, getting tested for these for um, AIDS. So um, there, time and time again, over the last administration in office that we've had, Donald A. Trump tried to defund Planned Parenthood so many times. And right now, as we do have the current administration in office in Washington, D.C. under Biden, as well as whoever is also on his team, Kamala Harris, too, she supports the efforts in getting women access to quality care. I think it is great that Planned Parenthood, as well as other clinics, other reproductive health care clinics, not only for women, not only for men, but also for young people under the ages of 18, in order for them to get access and quality care to getting the assistance that they need for just getting tested for HIV, which a lot of parents have issues with. They don't really want to necessarily ask their child and talk to their child about reproductive sexual health care. And so that is another issue that I went through in Washington, D.C. At, in, at Howard University, which Washington, D.C. is also known for its the, one of the highest rates of HIV transmission in the United States is in Washington, D.C., as well as in the black community. So that is something that Planned Parenthood has been really involved in, as well as other cl community clinics, the AIDS Health Foundation, as well as Planned Parenthood supporting those efforts and getting people access to quality health care, as well as access to S HIV and STDs treatment. So this is not only protecting women, but this is also protecting a lot of people in general, getting them access to reproductive care, reproductive and sexual reproductive health care, which also is under the umbrella of HIV and AIDS treatment, STD treatment. So I'm glad that the Biden administration is talking about this very important issue that has been on the back burner between the state of Texas as well as other jurisdictions under the law who have been have also had very conservative governments 
in Florida too with Rick uh, DeSantos and his uh, administration too. So um, again, I have a very um, conservative family. My family is from the ministry, so I do understand where they're coming from. But for myself here in the Cambridge, Boston area, Boston is still a very much liberal city, but it is surrounded by very conservative counterparts in the state of Massachusetts as well as in Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and Pennsylvania. So. Boston is very much surrounded by a very conservative region, but in a very liberal city such as Chicago as well. Chicago is liberal, but Illinois is conservative. It's conservative, very much conservative. So that's what you deal with in a lot of situations, such in, even in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is a very much a liberal city, but it's surrounded by a very much conservative, conservative policies as in Virginia, as well as in the case of Virginia and Maryland. Very conservative Bible Belt Church, um, Bible Belt Church region. Um, so that is something that I, I really do uh, pretend. I support the efforts of the Department of Justice and what um, Biden administration is currently doing, saying today, at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time that denying women the opportunity to get an abortion after six weeks is unconstitutional. Um, Attorney General Merrick Garland, which is good to have him back in office, um, said that it's unprecedented to prevent women from exercising their constitutional rights by throttling ju judicial review for as long as possible. Um, it's further on in this, this scene in an article by a journalist, Tyranny Sneed, Tyranny Sneed, okay, um, announcing the lawsuit um, saying that the Texas law was designed specifically with the goal of making it more difficult for clinics to obtain federal court orders blocking enforcement of the law instead of creating criminal penalties for abortions conducted after a fetal heartbeat is defected, is detected. The Texas legislator has tasked private citizens, okay, these are private citizens, regular citizens like you and myself right here, and anyone else who assists a woman in obtaining an abortion after six weeks in the state of Texas. So that is what's happening right now. Now, I was born in the state of Texas, but I'm no longer a Texas resident. But it doesn't necessarily have to be um, you uh, you can still be within the boundaries as well as within the jurisdiction of the state of Texas in order for you as well as those who are assisting you in your efforts to be fined up to $10,000 or whatever assets that that person can, take, can deem to take from you. So um, uh, I do support it and as well as, I mean, it's great to, fo to focus on abortion. Abortion care is great, but like I said, I've been in the clinical side for over five, ten years. My focus is primarily on sexual and reproductive health care. So sexual health care is very important. Um, I think getting tested for HIV as well as STDs is also very, very much important, which is not being addressed. That issue is not being addressed. So we've had great clinics who have not received as much support as, of course, Planned Parenthood. There have been really great clinics out there that have, have gone unfunded, have been defunded, and have gone under the rug. But they still are out here providing services for the community, asking for donations, asking for help, getting out to the citizens, getting out to the people. HIV is still a very high, high virus and disease that is still affecting people all over the United States. So HIV is unfortunately, is still a very much high epidemic, okay? There have been more people infected with HIV AIDS over the pandemic than have been with the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus. So unfortunately, that has not been talked about in the social media, even with Biden, as well as the previous Trump administration, that HIV has been put under the rug, uh, under, under the focus that COVID-19 virus has. So as a, as a person in the cl clinical side, I would encourage you guys to still get tested for HIV STDs, as well as take care of you and yourselves and your loved ones. If you are going through any kind of domestic violence or situation out there, reach out to yourselves or your loved ones or your friends and families. This is a very emotional time 
for myself as well. Um, I was in Washington DC sitting on the steps of the Supreme Courthouse and praying to myself, praying how would I understand the situation, how it would apply to me, as well as just going through all the legality issues over the past years, all the legal, legal jargon. But you really can't solve an issue that has happened over 20, 30, 50 years overnight. You can't solve an issue overnight, and neither can a state take away the decision overnight. There still has to be laws in place, as well as the Department of Justice cannot all of a sudden make a decision to sue the state of Texas overnight. They still have to go through difficult legalities, as well as still the Department of Justice has to deal with the Supreme Court. They still have to abide under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in order to make, to finalize into law what they are trying to do, and as well as making even a presidential declaration um, saying that if it is legal or legal in the land. But of course, again, this issue comes with church versus state. It's also another very important issue against what is church versus state. So. Um, we've, we've right now we're going through a very difficult civil war with the uh, with the previous current administration. A lot of veterans do not currently support Biden and with his efforts of withdrawing from Afghanistan. But that's just how it is. Okay, that's just how it is. I am an army army a prior service veteran. But at the same time, though, I, I'm very encouraged that we were able to get our troops out in time. At the same time, though, it still has not been declared that the United States has declared Afghanistan as a loss to the United States government. It has not been declared that we have lost the war to own Afghanistan, okay? But still, we have more and more efforts to do to maintain the security and the safety of our government and protections of our citizens against any other kind of terrorism attack such as happened 20 years ago in 9-11, okay? So we're still remembering 9-11, okay? So this is a clean battle. I'm here in the campus student science services talking to you as well as being talking to other people um, about world versus raid. It's been 50 years, but 50 years did not happen overnight. It took some time. Um, it took some time and I'm talking to you through my computer, through social media and all these other platforms as well as what the DOG is doing versus what the Supreme Court is doing in Washington, D.C. You have the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. as well as each and every single state also has their own individual Supreme Courts as well as their own regional and jurisdictional jurisdiction courts established to mandate case-by-case -case analysis what is the law of the state versus what is the law of the land, okay? So there's still the DOJ as well as Supreme Court and the Biden administration, Kamala Harris and, and President Biden still have a lot to do and a lot to undertake. It's great that Kamala Harris supports the initiatives of what clinics are doing. That's great, Vice President Harris, that's a great ideal. But at the same time though, we still want to encourage reproductive health care as well as sexual health care too. Okay, sexual health care, STDs and HIV testing. Still encourage STDs, HIV and STD AIDS testing, okay? All right, so um, it says here, currently in the um, CNN article, the Supreme Court's in DC's refusal to stop the law from going into effect caught Justice Department officials by surprise. According to a DOJ official, since every other similar similar restrictive law has been blocked. Um, today, Garland, um, Attorney General, I mean, uh, General Garland, said that the Texas law infringed upon the activities of the Labor Department, Defense Department, and other federal agencies. Specifically, the DOJ said in the lawsuit that Texas law exposes federal personnel and grantees to liability for carrying out their federal obligations to provide access to abortion-related services to persons in the federal government's care. Um, and then it goes on to say here, reproductive rights groups that have already brought their own federal court challenge to the Texas law only to see that lawsuit stalled by the procedural difficulties that ban presents, cheered the Biden administration act actions. 
Bridget Amiri, Deputy Director of the ACLU, ACLU, which they also need to be mentioned too. Reproductive Freedom Project called the new lawsuit Welcome Laws. And Nancy Northrup, President, okay, here we go, Bridget and, Bridget and Nancy, Bridget and Nancy, President and CEO of the Center for Reproductive Rights, deemed the DOJ's involvement a game changer. So it's great. Again, again, um, Attorney General Garland on Monday, Monday's briefing, had pledged to protect abortion clinics in Texas by enforcing a federal law that prohibits making threats against patients seeking reproductive health services and obstructing clinic entrances. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. But still encouraging, encouraging sexual sexual health care too, okay, sexual and reproductive health care, which also needs to be addressed too, since we are in the midst of dealing with recovering from this COVID-19 pandemic, okay? So this is a clean battle set so medical assistant first aid, adult pediatric first aid coming here from Harvard University's campus. It's great that the, that the Department of, of Justice is doing a great job saying that we support the init initiatives of reproductive lobbyists in D.C. It's great to lobby. It's great to lobby. It's great to have people in your corner. It's, go it's great to go to rallies. It's great to have women wear hoods protecting, you know, saying we uh, support women's rights. I mean, it's good to get all dressed up, but at the end of the day, you are still at home. You are still isolated in your situation. You are still alone and you are still scared. And this is a very, very serious situation for a lot of women, not only for women, but also for young girls, as well as for the transgender community too who unfortunately have not been talked about very much too. So also for a transgender um, and the gay and lesbian community too and their sexual and reproductive health care as well, okay? So it's great to go to rallies. It's great to go to, to, to go out and defend and protect your rights against abortion. It's great to go out in public, but you know what? At the end of the day, you come home and you still have to go through the same situation over and over again, okay? Abortion is a is a public matter that is dealing with a private situation okay abortion is a public matter dealing with a private situation so not only for women but also for young underage girls and that's not being very talked about i'm glad that the doj was actually able to focus on rape and incest as a factor that the state of Texas would deny rape and incest against um, uh, detail for getting a access to, to an abortion, okay? So I'm great that Attorney General Merritt actually put that into uh, his briefing today, rape and incest, okay? So that's great because it also focuses on underage individuals, okay? Who do not have the affordability, who do not have a voice lent to them that uh, women uh, who have the opportunity to go to a clinic, okay, um, have the opportunity to actually walk to a clinic, travel to a clinic, bus to a clinic, have that opportunity that a lot of young girls, a lot of underage girls, even up to 8, 10 years old, 12 years old, are not afforded that opportunity because they are in a very dangerous situation. And so their only access is, of course, either getting treatment services at an emergency room in a hospital, or going through a personal family friend, or, or close friend, or relative. And usually, most of the times, that is in a very dangerous, dangerous situation. So I'm glad they actually talked about rape and incest too as well. So, okay, that's great. And uh, today was a good idea to go out there and discuss, you know, of course, um, the Department of Justice talking about abortion, abortion care, World vs. Wade is going on into its 50th, 60th anniversary. That's great, but we still have a lot to do with going over the Trump policies. I'm here at Harvard University in Cambridge. A lot of young people are emotional about the situation as well as talking and discussing this is the same issue with a lot of young people and still i'm here in here in boston being told to of course i'm a single individual being told to you know 
I'm single, I'm a black female, what's my job? What's my job? What's my job? What should I do? What's my job? You know, so um, it's just, I pretty much get, you know, it's salted every single day, but I still have an opportunity to still make a difference in somebody, somebody's life. So I'm talking to you guys right here on the computer screen, via social media, as well as all my Facebook groups, all my other social media groups, and dealing with the issues that pertain to us, okay? So abortion is not only a woman's right, but it's also a young child's right too as well, okay? Especially dealing in situations with rape and incest, as well as abusive, abusive domestic violence situations, okay? Domestic violence. So. Um, which is which is not really being talked about too. It needs to be addressed too as well. So anyway, today it is 4:45 here in the East Coast at Harvard University campus. I'm in the midst right now of of trying to get published through the American Psychological Association. So I'm gonna finalizing my first second publication through the American Psychological Association. Okay, I'm talking about low enrollments for. Ivy League institutions as well as pertaining to how it pertains to COVID-19. So great. And then I'll continue to work on my publications from there. Okay. All right. So this Queen battle, I have a lot to do. Um, I'm, I'm trying to write um, Harvard University is a great, great place to network and meet with people. But again, you know, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much really going to talk about it and discuss it a little bit more. Abortion is a public issue that is dealing with a private matter, okay? Abortion is a public issue that is dealing with a private matter, okay? So, it has become public because it's becoming out of the shell and it's been made more a legality issue, a religious issue, but people have been having abortions for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. It's old. But we still have to continue to update the laws and update the legislation and continue to support updating, keeping current laws in motion. Not only Roe versus Wade, but also the Civil Rights Act of 1956, as well as the Voters' Rights Act of the 1950s. We still have to continually update and to continually keep those laws in motion to make sure those same laws that applied in the 50s apply to today. Those laws, when we make laws, those laws expire. They do expire. So we also have to keep updating, keep in transition, making sure that these laws are also kept up to date with what is going on current in millennial Gen X society. I'm a Gen Xer too. So anyway. Okay, so this is a queen battle by the first aid responder services. Again, again, abortion is a public issue that is dealing with a private matter. Okay, it is a public issue that is dealing with a private matter. Okay, so there's a lot that needs to be talked about it and discussed as mom, you know, it could be church versus state, it could be a religious issue, it could be a sexual reproductive health issue, it could be a marriage issue, it could be a gay rights equality issue, it could be whatever kind of issue you want it to be. But again, it's a public issue dealing with a private matter, okay, a private matter. So it, you can talk about it as much as you want to, but at the end of the day, that person, that individual, either a male or a female, has to go home and face their decisions, okay? Face their decisions, okay? The ch decision and the choice that they made, okay? I decided to abort this child, but I decided that I wanted to go to the abortion clinic with my partner, okay? So there's a lot to be made in it, okay? As well as dealing with the gay and lesbian and transgender community, okay? To male to female, they were born female, but they've changed over to men. And so now they're having, transgender people are now having children, okay? So it's also that choice where I'm transgender, I, I got pregnant, but I don't wanna carry this child. So it also has to do with lay as gay, as well as le lesbian and transgender, the gay and lesbian community rights too as well, 
okay so there's a lot that's intermingled with it there's a lot but again I'm gonna say one more time abortion is a public issue dealing with a private matter okay it's a public issue dealing with a private matter okay you can talk about it as much as you want but at the end of the day it's one person's decision okay it's still that one person's choice okay all right so this is the queen bottle to so encourage you guys to go out there and get tested for hiv std treatment and pretty much do what you can take care of yourself okay get tested for covid as well as coronavirus okay and then take care of yourselves your family and your loved ones this this holiday season classes just started here in the united states for the fall 2021 semester i'm here at harvard and mit classes have start right now it's in motion they're doing about but again you know, take it step by step, take it day by day. Okay, this is the Queen Battle of Battle First Aid Responder Services. I love you guys. Continue to keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Please donate, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, as well as um, uh, you can reach me, email Battle First Aid, Battle First Aid at iCloud.com. That's B A T T L E, the number one S T at iCloud.com. Again, let's say it one more time. Abortion is a public issue dealing with a private matter. You can be pro-choice, you can be pro-life, you can be whatever. But at the end of the day, it's a public issue dealing with a private matter. Okay? All right. God bless you guys.